an essential part of, uh, of, of how the brain works is that it's not the sum of a collection of independent parts. Um, in order for you to have a thought, uh, presumably roughly a million neurons have to cooperate. A, diff a million different nerve cells have to do something together. In order for you to move your arm, it's not enough that um, you know, one, one cell in your brain says, you know, reach for the apple, right? That doesn't work. Um, the, the command to move your arm or the plan to move your arm is something that's, that is uh, shared among a very large number of cells. And presumably, it's not each of those cells doing its own thing independently. It's not just shared, it's collective. There's something about the whole population of neurons working together that is different than um, what each of them would do on their own. Now in physics, we have lots of examples of this, and in fact, we're surrounded by examples like this. So if I take a glass of water um, and I put my finger in it, I can move my finger through it easily. If I cool the water down so that it becomes ice, this doesn't work anymore. And if I, instead, if I push on one end of an ice cube, the other end moves. Now, the forces that the molecules of water exert on each other are the same in each case. The difference is that we've lowered the temperature just a little bit. And in fact, in meaningful units, um, although we experience the difference between freezing and not freezing as being a qualitative difference, in meaningful units, we've only changed things by a few percent. And importantly, the difference between being solid and liquid is not a property of individual molecules. It doesn't make any sense to ask whether a single molecule of water is, is ice or water. It's a property of the whole. And it's, a, it's an amazing property. Um, you know, each molecule really only interacts with its neighbors. But when you push on an ice cube, you very easily transmit the force all the way across the ice cube, right, so that the entire ice cube moves. But the, the molecules that are moving on the other side of the ice cube, they're, you know, a distance away that you can see. It's measured in inches or something. And that's um, a distance which is 100 million molecules. So it is the equivalent of, you know, telling somebody something in New York and without having an internet or a phone system that allows you to actually make long distance connections, you just have people talking to their neighbors and somehow somebody in San Francisco knows what happened and does the right thing. Um, it happens all the time, right? We see it around us all the time and so we're used to it, but really it's quite astonishing. So in physics we have a language for dealing with all this and we pretty much understand how it works, okay? We can, we can explain how solidity emerges, although it's not trivial. Um, so can we explain how something ordered, uh, something collective emerges from millions of nerve cells in your brain? Um, all talking to each other. 